So in the previous lecture, we have seen the definition of derivative and what is the geometrical interpretation of the derivative of a vector function. Now we, have, we will study some more properties of derivatives of vector functions. So the very first property is that uh, if I have u bar is a vector function of one variable, so u is u bar t and v is equal to v is also a vector function and both are differentiable functions, means I can differentiate uh, them then what is the derivative of the, uh, the vector u bar plus v bar, the vector function u bar plus v bar. So it is, uh, it will be proved that it is derivative of u bar plus the derivative of v bar, right? So the proof of this property is very easy, right? So now uh, what do you know is uh, what is the derivative of, uh, so I will first of all, what I will do, I will say let uh, f bar be equal to f bar be equal to u bar plus v bar, right? So f bar of t is equal to u bar of t plus v bar of t. Now I want the derivative of uh, f bar, right? So what is the derivative of f bar t? Uh, the derivative of this function, I'm going to denote, uh, I'm, ha I'm having the definition is what? Limit or as t tending to t naught, right? f bar t minus f bar t naught divided by t minus t naught, right? So this is the definition of our derivative. This definition, you know that you can also replace by an alternative definition, which is a uh, limit delta t tending to zero. We also use this definition as an alternative definition of the derivative, which is f bar of t plus, let us write, the derivative at t naught here, okay? So this is the old definition. Now what I'm going to write, I'm going to write the definition of the derivative of f bar at point t, okay? So it is t plus delta t minus f bar of t divided by delta t, right? So this definition, we know that this is our original definition, right? We are not going to, we are not going to use this definition to prove this property currently. We are going to use this definition, right? And what is f bar? You know that f bar is what? u bar plus v bar. So this limit will become limit delta t tending to zero of f bar of t plus delta t. So what is f bar of t plus delta t? It is u bar of t plus delta t plus v bar of t plus delta t minus what is f bar? f bar is u bar t plus v bar t divided by delta t, correct. And then I will collect the, the terms, which are like terms, limit delta t tending to zero, and I'm going to separate the two limits. So limit delta t tending to zero. So what will I will write here? I'm going to write people with u bar. So it is u bar of t plus delta t minus u bar of t divided by delta t. And here I'm going to write people which are having v bar. So it is v bar of t plus delta t minus v bar of t divided by delta t, right? And what is this definition? What is this first definition, first component in the definition in this uh, step? It is nothing but du bar by dt, correct? So let me write it as du bar by dt. And what is this second part? This is nothing but dv bar by dt. So we have proved that df bar by dt is equal to, we start, see we started with df bar by dt, right? So we, so we got df bar by dt is nothing but du bar by dt plus dv bar by dt, right? But what is f bar? If you remember what is f bar? f bar was u bar plus v bar. So we have proved that d by dt of u bar plus v bar is nothing but du bar by dt plus dv bar by dt. So this is how this property is proved. Right. Now uh, we can also prove uh, one another property. Say I'm going to write it as, again u bar and v bar are differentiable functions. Please assume that for the entire property until all the properties are finished. 
So they are differentiable functions of t. And what is the derivative of u bar dot v bar? This is what we want to prove is that this will be u bar dot dv bar by dt plus the derivative of u bar du bar by dt dot v bar. Please note these dots are important because these are vectors. Okay. So the third property is that u bar and v bar are differentiable functions. Then you can also prove that d by dt of u bar cross v bar. So this is now the cross product. Okay. And we know something very important property about cross product is that a bar cross b bar is uh, not the same as b bar cross a bar. Okay. So I have to remember that now is equal to u bar cross dv bar by dt plus dv du bar by dt du bar by dt cross v bar. Okay. Here while proving this property, you have to take care of the thing that I know is a bar cross b bar need not be the same as b bar cross a bar. So you have to be very careful when I'm using the, when I'm trying to prove the second property. Now both the properties have the a very similar type of proof. Okay. So I will uh, right now we will just see how will you prove the, the third property. Okay. So what is u d by dt of, I'm starting with the left hand side. Okay. What is d by dt of u bar cross v bar? Okay, so we know the definition of u bar cross v bar, the derivative. So I'm going to write limit delta t tending to zero of u bar cross u bar cross v bar at t plus delta t minus u bar cross v bar at t upon delta t and delta t tending to zero. So this will be equal to how much? This is equal to, scroll down. So which is equal to limit delta t tending to zero. This I'm going to write as u bar of t plus delta t cross v bar of t plus delta t minus u bar of t cross v bar of t divided by delta t. Okay, now I'm going to do some smart work here. I'm going to add and subtract a quantity. What is that quantity? So limit delta t tending to zero. I'm going to add the same quantity and subtract the same quantity so that the meaning does not get changed. Okay, so let me write one upon delta t in the corner. Inside I have u bar t plus delta t cross v bar t plus delta t. I'm going to add something and then I'm going to subtract something. So let me first uh, subtract something. So let me subtract instead of adding, let me subtract u bar t plus delta t cross only v bar t. Okay. I'm adding the same quantity u bar t plus delta t cross v bar minus v bar t minus u bar v bar t that is the original term is there in the previous step okay so I have added and subtracted this term. And then we will look at only the first two terms. So what is that equal to? It is limit delta t tending to zero, one upon delta t of u bar t plus delta t cross v bar t plus delta t minus u bar t plus delta t cross v bar t, this is the first term, plus 1 by delta t, this limit is there to both of them, okay, 
1 by delta t. What is these two terms? I'm going to write the third and the fourth term. What will I get? u bar t plus delta t cross v bar t minus u bar t cross v bar t. Right? And then in the first square bracket here, I see that uh, u bar t plus delta t, the term u bar t plus delta t is common between both um, both of them. So I'll take it common from the left hand side. So limit delta t tending to zero, one upon delta t. And I'm getting u bar of t plus delta t, which is common cross, what am I getting in the other bracket? V bar t plus delta t minus V bar t, right? Plus in the next term, what am I going to get? In the next second term, I'm having one by delta t bracket in the square bracket. Now here I can see in the second part v bar t is common and it is in the right hand side. I'm going to put it on the right hand side. So 1 by delta t cross see this v bar t and v bar t is common. I'm going to write here v bar t common on the right hand side. What am I left inside? u bar t plus delta t minus u bar t. Right? This term minus this term. And if I look at 1 upon delta t and this v bar t plus delta, this is nothing but derivative of v bar, right? And what will happen if delta t tends to 0? This person will go away. So in the next step, when I take the limit, so this term will just become u bar t for delta t is tending to 0. This 1 upon delta t and v bar delta t, t plus delta t minus v bar t, that is nothing but the cross of derivative of v bar plus. What is this entire term as delta t tends to 0? As delta t tends to 0, this is nothing but du bar by dt cross and this v bar t is as it is. So we have proved that the derivative of u bar cross v bar is nothing but what? u bar into derivative of v bar plus derivative of u bar cross v bar, right? Remember that do not change the order of these derivatives. Do not change the order of u and v because we know that a cross b need not be the need not be the same as b cross a. So don't write by mistake. Uh, by mistake, uh, students write it as du bar u bar cross. So what is a common mistake that students make? They write it like this u bar cross v bar derivative is what? They write u bar cross dv bar by dt. And then they write du bar by dt and they write v bar and they change the order of u bar. So they, they write v bar cross du bar by dt. So don't do this. Okay. If in the original question, u bar is in the first position, v bar is in the second position. In the answer, everywhere u bar has to be in the first position. So here u bar is in the first position, but here u bar is going to say, so this will become wrong. If you want to do that, if you want to do that, you have to change the sign in that case, because we know that a bar cross b bar is the opposite of Minus of b bar cross a bar, right? So if you want to change the order of these two people, if you want to change this two people, you, you have to change the sign in that case. Okay. So I hope this theorem is clear now. Take a next property in which I'm going to take phi to be a scalar function. Okay. So phi is a scalar function. So it will not have the components i, j, k. And u bar I'm going to take to be a vector function, right? So what is the derivative of the product phi into u bar. So again, this is a scalar and this is a vector. So the entire thing is what? Entire thing is a vector, right? So what will that be? So it is. it will be the proof of this is the same as the above proof that we discussed. 
So it will be what? It will be phi into the derivative of u bar plus d phi by dt into u bar. So it's same like our product rule. So this is a scalar. This is a vector. This derivative becomes a scalar. And uh, this u bar is a vector. So what is a scalar into vector? It's a vector. What's the scalar into vector? It's again a vector. And what is the addition of two vectors? So that is again a vector. So left hand side is also a vector and the right hand side is also a vector. The proof of this is the same as we have done for u bar cross p bar. Okay. Only here you, you don't have to mention which product you are using between phi and u bar. You just write phi and u bar because phi is a scalar and u bar is a vector. If you have two vectors adjoining each other, then you have to either write a dot or you have to write a cross. Okay. So if you're writing a scalar with a, with a vector, you better don't write anything. It's understood that this is nothing but which type of multiplication. This is a scalar multiplication. So it's like a, it's like a vector three into u bar. So you don't write anything between three and u bar. It's understand that this three is going to multiply this vector u bar. So this three is going to multiply AI plus BJ plus CK and which is nothing but three A plus three B plus three C. Okay. In, in that ijk with, the, with respect to ij so 3a i plus 3bj plus 3ck okay so this is how you multiply scalar and a vector right so the proof is the same so i will not discuss the proof in this video